Welcome to lecture number 27 for ECE 461 control systems, root locus for systems with delays. Now, there are several ways to get a delay in a system. One of them is where you place the sensor. If I have the sensor, for example, placed away from the actuators for a paper mill, as the rollers go up and down and get different thicknesses of paper, the measured thickness, however, doesn't show up until the paper passes by the sensors. This is one way you can get a delay. A second way is if you take a high-order system and use a low-order approximation. For example, here I have four poles. If I keep the dominant two poles, the pole at minus 5 and minus 10, I get almost the same step response. It's got the same settling time, same overshoot, same DC gain, but there's extra delay. That extra delay is due to those poles I ignored. So a more accurate model would be to take the blue line, the second-order approximation, and delay it, and have two poles plus a delay. That'll be a better model for the system, and better models give you better prediction for how the system would behave. Uh, for example, I can calculate that delay. If these two systems are the same, they should have the same gain and same phase shift at each point. So let's pick a point like one rating per second. At one rating per second, the phase shift of the fourth order system should match the phase shift of the second order system. In order to do that, I have to add a delay of 8.3 milliseconds or 83 milliseconds. If I do that, then the blue line, the second order system with a delay, has almost the same step response as the red line. That creates a better model. So likewise, when I design a feedback system around this system, around that model, I'll more accurately predict how the closed loop system will behave. And again, that's the goal. What you want is an accurate model that's simple. And delays are one way to account for all the dynamics that you've ignored. Now, the problem with delays and root locus is with the root locus, I'm using poles and zeros. I need to know what the poles and zeros are for the system. Uh, the root locus starts at the open loop poles. They go to the closed loop zeros. They follow the root locus path. However, a delay is e to the minus st. That's the delay of t seconds. That doesn't really work with root locus. I need to know what the poles and zeros are, and this isn't in that form. So, one way to do that is change the problem. Let's come up with an approximation for the e to the minus st that has poles and zeros. And one way to do that is let's take e to the minus st, put half in the numerator, half in the denominator. Now do a Taylor series expansion. This is a potty approximation. The more terms you include, the more accurate it is, but the more complicated the model. That's also a function in MATLAB called potty. So I can sit there and say, I want a half second delay and use two terms or four terms or whatever you want. For example, suppose I have this system and I want to find the feedback gain K for 20% overshoot. So put this in your feedback loop, adjust the feedback gain, adjust till I get 20% overshoot. Well, this part right here I know. To draw the root locus, I need to know the poles and zeros of your half second delay. So one way to do that is throw that in MATLAB and do a pot A approximation with 0.5 second delay for two terms, second order. And what that gives you is this. I've got two zeros and two poles. What that does is the gain's always one. Uh, the gain of delay is one. A one second sine wave or one volt sine wave delayed is still a one volt sine wave. The phase shift, however, goes from zero to I think 90 plus 90, zero to minus 360 degrees for this one. For an actual delay, it goes unlimited. So this will match the phase up to about minus 360 degrees. Or equivalently, I'm going to add two zeros at plus six plus minus j3.4 and two poles at the mirror image, minus six plus minus j3.4. Now when I do that, I get this root locus. I've got the poles of the plant at zero, minus five, and minus 10. I've got the potty approximation for delay. I've added two poles at minus six plus minus j3 and two zeros at plus six plus minus j3. Now what the zeros do is they attract and that's, that's about right, because with delays, delays tend to unstabilize or destabilize the system. For example, pretend you're trying to drive a car. If there's a one second delay between turning the steering wheel and the car responding, it's really hard keeping the car on the road. Uh, delays are the bane of control systems. The delay tends to make it go unstable, and that's what this model's showing you. The two zeros are pulling the root locus right. The two zeros are making you go unstable. If I want 10% overshoot, then I draw on the damping line for 0.5910. 
and where it intersects the root locus is my design point. There's actually two solutions. I've got one solution right here. That's actually not the dominant pole. I don't care about that solution. The one I care about is right here. That's your dominant pole. That's the one that's going to dominate the step response. So this is the one I look for. Um, turns out S is minus 0.66 plus J1.32. At that point, pick K so that the gain is 1. It turns out that K is 0.4484. That's my design. In MATLAB, I can check the response. I can input the plant G, pulse at 0, minus 5, minus 10. I can input the potty approximation, a 0.5 second delay with two terms. Now, potty gives you the numerator denominator polynomial. Throw that in a transfer function called delay, a completely original name. And there's my k that I calculated with the root locus. The closed loop system is g times delay times k over 1 plus g times delay times k. That's your g over 1 plus g, except that the open loop gain is now your g plus the delay plus gain. Uh, when you do this, MATLAB gives you some stray poles. Get rid of them with min real. Now take the step response to the closed loop system. And this is what you see. Ideally, it's a half second delay, and then it responds. What the potty approximation does is it wiggles around up and down for half a second and then responds. The low pass filter plus the wiggling gives you almost no response for half a second, then responds. Again, it's not exactly a half second delay, hence the name potty approximation, but it's fairly good. But anyway, that's what I predict uh, with the second order potty approximation. K is 0.4484. Uh, well, if you want to get more accurate, use a fourth-order potty approximation. Now, this quickly gets kind of unwieldy. A fourth-order potty approximation for half-second delay you can just do pot A of 0.5 comma 4. So half-second delay, four terms. What you get are four poles. These are the four poles to approximate the delay and the mirror image, four unstable zeros. The zeros pull the root locus right, and the poles just keep the gain 1. For all frequencies. Again, the gain of a delay is 1. I now have this root locus. I want to find out which point crosses your damping line, and again it's right here. Is the pole near s equals 0? That's my dominant pole. If I zoom in on that part of the graph, I can find the point where it crosses. That's minus 0.66 plus j1.33. At that point, make the gain 1. So evaluate g of s, g times k, or g times delay at this point. I should get 180 degrees. Uh, gain will be off. Pick K to make the gain 1. And I'm going to show you how you do this in MATLAB. In MATLAB, you first input the plant. Got no zeros. Pulls at 0. Oh, puppy dog. So there's your plant. The delay uh, let's do fourth order potty point five second delay fourth order potty approximation. So the delay, let's call it D, is transfer function of numerator denominator. And how did I spell it? Well, Spelling it correctly, there's your delay. Now I want to find out which, you know, where the dominant pole is. So let's guess S is minus 1 plus J times 2, uh, 1.36. That gives me 10% overshoot. And evaluate G of S times the delay at that point. If that point's on the real on the root locus is the phase shift is 180 degrees, meaning the real part should be negative and the complex part should be zero. It's not, so that point's not on the root locus. I can iterate to find it. Let's make s 10% smaller. And I'm using the arrow up command. That was better. Notice the complex part went from 0.55 to 0.25. 10% smaller. Oh, that's really close. I went a little bit past the uh, root locus plot because the sign change on the complex part. So now let's make S a little bit bigger. 
a 1% bigger. And I went too far. And again, too far. And we're just using the arrow commands, iterating. Well, that's pretty close. So let's call that S. So that's my design point. I can now find K. So evaluate G times K, G times D at that point. Uh, the gain should be 1. So K is just 1 over that. So K is 0 0.3671. That's kind of one way to find the feedback gain using MATLAB, searching the root locus until the angles add up to 180. Well, along those lines, there's another way to find the gain uh, for a system with a delay. Now, instead of using a potty approximation, again, in MATLAB, what I was doing, this is the right keyboard here. I've got two keyboards I'm working on. It gets confusing as to which one I'm supposed to be using. Okay, instead of using the potty approximation for delay, why not use an actual delay? So again, what I'm going to be doing is I'm searching along this line until the angle's add up to 180 degrees. So what I want to do is take g of s times a delay. Well, MATLAB can handle a delay. That's just e to the minus 0.5s. So there's actually no reason to use a potty approximation. I'm just going to search until the angle's add up to 180 degrees. And here's what that looks like. I'm going to guess s is minus 1 plus j2. Here's your g of s. Uh, evaluate g of s times e to the minus 0.5s, and you get a complex number. The Angle with the complex part should be zero. It's not, so this point's not on the root locus. Uh, let's iterate. Let's make s 10% smaller. Again, better. Um, keep going, keep going. Again, kind of show you. s is minus 1 plus j times 2. That sets the angle, a 2 to 1 ratio. That gives me 20% overshoot. Now let's evaluate g of s at that point times. A delay, e to the minus 0.5s. And again, that puts not on the root locus. So let's make s 10% smaller. Try it again. I'm getting closer. Ooh, that was really close. Uh, let's make it a little bit bigger. See, I'm getting closer and closer to zero. I'm looking at the complex part of the pole. Here's two. Okay, right about there. Complex part's almost zero. So that's almost where the root locus intersects your G of S, or your damping line. To find K then, I just evaluate at that point. G times K should be minus 1. This is negative real, so there's the minus sign. The amplitude's wrong. So K is just 1 over the answer. So K should be 0 0.4566. This approach I really like because you don't have to do a party approximation. All approximations are approximate, hence the name. It's I can use the actual delay. Um, I'm just going to iterate anyway because I got MATLAB. I'm going to iterate to find the answer. I'm using root locus to say where do the angles add up to 180 degrees along that damping line. It's not exactly root locus, however, because I don't actually draw the root locus. But what you're kind of doing is saying, if I did draw the root locus, it would do something. All I really care about is that one point right there. If I could find this point, that's the only point I care about on the root locus. That's the point that defines what K is. Search this line until I find that point, and to find it, it's where do the angles add up to 180 degrees on this line. So again, that's kind of a different way of doing it. I'm not sure any other university teaches it this way, uh, but that's how I like to do it. Uh, to me, it's a whole lot easier, it's more accurate, and the acid test is, it gives you the right answer. Uh, 
also there. Just did that. So the net result is we've got three different methods. I could use a second order potty approximation, and here's the answer you get and k. I could use a fourth order potty approximation, and I get k is 0.4566, slightly different, more accurate. Or the numerical method, the last one I showed you, uh, using the exact e to the minus st and iterating, moving along the damping line until the angles add up. This is the actual answer, minus 0.667, and k is 0.4566. In this case, it's the same thing it got with the fourth order pot A, but a little bit easier. That's kind of how you handle systems with delays. The real test is, does it work? What I would do is throw this in VSIM. Uh, Simulink has got a similar pro uh, program. I would have my system G of S. Here's my half second delay. And there's my gain. What you see is that the output is delayed by half a second. So this isn't an approximation. It's actually half second delay. Uh, in the feedback loop. The net result is to get 20% overshoot. That's my requirement. So that's the right K. This is also on homeworks. What actually makes grading a whole lot easier, if you include this plot, you can show that I have the half-second delay. I can see that on the plot. I've got 20% overshoot. That's the right answer. Oftentimes in this class, there's multiple ways to do a problem. Um, the real test is, did you get the right answer? Did I get the 20% overshoot? Um, in this case, yeah, I did. So that's kind of how to handle delays. Either use a potty approximation, take a delay, and turn it into pulse and zeros. Or, better yet, just use the delay as is. Then when you simulate it, don't simulate the potty approximation. If you can simulate the delay, use an actual delay. This is how it actually would be implemented. And likewise, it's best to test it on the actual system, not necessarily the system you analyzed. That's just lecture number 27 for EC461 Control Systems, Systems with Delays.